Hi, I'm Bill Geisley from Geisley Automatics. Today, we're going to go through the installation of an ALG EMR. We're going to start with an upper receiver that has already had its barrel and its, its front sight block removed to make this a, a little more straightforward. Uh, in another video, we'll go through the disassembly of an AR-15 upper. But right now, we're going to start with a stripped one. Um, first thing you got to do when you go to install a rail is you have to have a proper place to work on it. You need a workbench with a vise, okay? Because with that vise, you've got to be able to hold the upper receiver properly. And there's different ways out on the market here to hold an upper receiver for an AR-15. There's vise clamps, different types of tools. Well, my favorite tool is something called the Geisley Reaction Rod, which is this guy right here. It's made from 4140 chrome moly steel, heat treated, centerless ground on the outside for a precise fit to your M4 carbine receiver, and makes working on your guns a snap. And I'll show you how this guy goes on. First, you put your, your upper receiver on this guy, and you take your barrel, and your barrel lugs will index onto the lugs here on the reaction rod. So you can see, I'll just show you right here how this guy fits in, all right? That holds it on there and it holds everything together. So when you're tightening this down, the torque that you're putting on goes right in through these lugs. It doesn't go into your receiver as you would use with receiver clamps, where you're wrenching on this thing and you're actually wrenching here, okay, against your aluminum receiver. You need a nice solid vise. This here is a wonderful vise made by Hewer from Germany. You can go to Arbor Freight and get yourself a vise for probably 30 bucks, okay? But you need a nice steady bench in order to mount that guy too. Now, the instructions for the EMR, it comes with every rail, okay? In detail, this will go through. Okay, how about I do this? I'm gonna move to this side. That's better for the cameras, I think. All right. The instructions for the EMR go through in detail what you need to do in order to install a rail. I realize that people who are putting their rails on, okay, this was not written for the gunsmith, okay? This is written for you and me, okay? For the normal guy who wants to learn how to work on his AR-15. One of the great things about the AR-15 is its modularity and how easy it is to work on. It's a genius of Eugene Stoner who designed it, okay? You can work on it yourself. It's straightforward. All you need are some basic tools. Some are specific to the AR-15, like the guys like Reaction Rod, but it's easy and straightforward, and we're gonna start right from the bottom. Okay, you can see the things that the, uh, that the rail comes with right here, all right? Comes with the rail proprietary barrel nut and a shim kit, barrel nut wrench, hand guard attachment screws, there's six of them, comes with the instruction sheet and the drawing. Tools that you're gonna need, you're gonna need a way, if you're starting with an, an upper that's assembled, you're gonna need a tool in order to remove the stock barrel nut. That's not included with this. You're gonna need a 12 inch piece of one inch pipe. You get that at Home Depot or Lowe's, you can even order it online from McMaster Car. Here, it's got a part number for that guy. You need a method of securely holding the upper receiver. Right there, you need a barrel, a, a, a vise, and you need a, a, a proper way to hold the upper receiver. And you're gonna need grease or anti seize, some type of a lubricant, okay? We come here to the barrel nut installation. This is the first thing that you're gonna look at. Right here you see the shoulder of your, upper, of your upper receiver along with the shoulder of your barrel, barrel extension that's inside it. And here you see a barrel shim going onto the barrel. The barrel nut for ALG is a machined barrel nut. This is it uncoated right here. At a 7075 T6 aluminum. It's coated with a special hard coat anodized that is an automotive specification for internal transmission components. It's very hard, 
It's very abrasion resistant, but it does not have a finished specification to it like the type three anodized that you see on the rail itself. It has an odd color, kind of grayish. You may notice that your barrel nut may be modeled. In other words, it may look like the finish is inconsistent, have little gold areas or off color areas. This is by nature due to the anodized specification where how it looks doesn't matter. Who cares about how a sliding piston valve and an automatic transmission is gonna look like? You don't see it, right? This is normal if you look at this. This one here is wonderfully symmetric all around it, but you may not see that on your barrel nut. But if you see a little discoloration, that's normal. That's the specification for this guy. So what we gotta do is we have to time this guy here to the gas tube. We have to make sure that one of these grooves here lines up with the gas tube when it's installed. We also have to make sure that this nut is tightened up properly. So two things have to happen at once. And the way we do it is through an engineering calculation, all right, that relates how much the barrel nut tightens up to torque, okay? What you're after, the goal, what you're after with this barrel nut, just imagine that you had a mysterious invisible giant that followed you around everywhere and held this barrel onto the upper receiver, okay? If that's all you really care about, that this thing is being held onto it so it doesn't come out and it's pushed in hard enough. It doesn't mean, it doesn't necessarily, you don't want tightness. You want it to be pushed in, all right? So how do you get that force in here, okay? You're after the force that holds that guy on. When you talk about torque, all right, foot pounds, that relates how much force you're putting on a certain length of wrench or torque wrench, all right, into the turning moment of your, of your nut. That's kind of like a secondary way to get your force that you're looking at. Because when you deal with torque, you have to bring in the coefficient of friction of your threads and your whole joint, all right? And that can vary, all right? Sometimes when people put things on, they don't lubricate it or it's dry, and that coefficient of friction, okay, can vary. So you have a variable in there. What you're after is how much it's actually the force that's going on here. I used to work in the mining industry. I spent seven years in it. I used to build very large mining machines. They would take a year, sometimes two years to build. They'd have thousands and thousands and thousands of bolts. Generally, these bolts are about two inches in diameter, about eight inches to nine inches long or so. And they had to be tightened up specifically, sometimes 2,000 to 3,000 foot-pounds. It was so critical that you could not put a torque wrench on these bolts, many thousands of them, and just tighten them up because the variability of the coefficient of friction, how much the nut would embed into the threads of the bolt or embed into your flanges. These were all variables that you set a torque, let's say 2,500 foot-pounds on this guy, you do it with a hydraulic torque wrench. You could, there's no way you could do it with a regular wrench on here. There'd be a tremendous amount of scatter. So what we would do is we'd measure the bolt before you put it on and then you measure it afterwards after you tightened it up. And depending upon what lubricant you used, whether you used hardened washers, okay, the surface finishes of the nut threads, surface finishes of the bolt threads, you'd come up with a torque value that would get you an elongation value here to the bolt that you wanted to tighten up. And it could be like 30 thousandths that you wanted this bolt in order to stretch, okay? In the same way, if you can use torque, you can also use how much you tighten, how far an angular movement you tighten your nut in order to get that elongation. It's another calculation that you can use. And that's what we did here. Instead of torque, where you take a torque wrench, we used the pitch of the threads and how many degrees you gotta twist this nut in order, just like you're elongating the bolt, how much force you develop into your joint on this guy right here, okay? So what we did is we have a shim kit that comes with 
each EMR, and you'll notice the shims are color-coded, all right? So what you do, the first thing you do is you gotta pick out the black one. You always have to start with a shim. You never put the nut on without a shim. You start with the black shim, all right? And these guys have little marks on them, and you pull out the black one. That's the first thing you do. And one of the things you notice about these shims is they're fairly, fairly hefty. They're not like a piece of tin foil. And I didn't want to work with 1,000s, 2,000s thick shims because they're delicate, and when you tighten them up underneath the barrel nut and you can't see them, they can get torn and they could fold and get you all jammed up. So when we worked out the engineering calculations to relate how much the barrel nut turns in an angular manner into how much force you get into your barrel extension into your threads, we made sure that we used a shim. This guy here is about 15 thousandths of an inch thick. We made sure that we use robust shims that'll handle the, the torque, the tightening torque, when the barrel nut goes onto those threads. So you start with your black shim. You run this guy right here over your barrel. And one of the things you do is you have to lubricate your threads, okay? Here we're gonna use anti-seize. This is a nickel anti-seize. You can use grease. You can use oil. Grease is preferable to oil, okay? Any grease will work, to be honest with you. I like anti-seize because it's gonna leave metallic particles back there, and when you go back in to remove your barrel nut, it's gonna come off lickety-split. There's some AR manufacturers out there. When you go to pull their barrel nut off, you find out they're red Loctite on there. There's absolutely no need for that. By tightening this barrel nut properly, that barrel nut will be secure and it will stay in place. There's no need for Loctite on there. You want lubricant on there in order to make the tightening process on this consistent and easy. And you don't want it to bind up and seize your threads together because you're gonna be pulling this off someday. Okay, so you spread anti-seize on your threads or grease and you gotta make sure that you get the face here of your barrel extension. Okay, this is where you have torque, tightening force coming into your barrel extension right there. So here goes your shim. Take your barrel nut, put any C's inside this guy, all right? Into the threads, against the face on the bottom, that ledge right there that your shim is gonna go along against. And you can't use too much lubricant, okay? Here we go. Now, there you go, you tighten it by hand. Now what you gotta do is you gotta seat your barrel nut into the threads. And why we do this is before we take a measurement on how far to turn the barrel nut, there may be little burrs on things, surface imperfections on the threads, you have to seat this guy, okay? The way you do it, you take your wrench, your purple wrench, you put it on, and it's a nice tight fit. And with my 50 year old eyes, there we go. All right, you just want to tighten it up a little bit. All right, so what you do, just take it by hand, don't put anything on it. Loosen and tighten several times, just like this to get everything seated in, okay? Now, the purple wrench, the patented purple wrench. This guy uses a really neat way of figuring out your torque and your index of your barrel nut, okay? You'll notice on this guy right here that there are ridges around the outside of this. And you have some smaller ridges, you have one big ridge in the center, and then right here, you, it's not broad, but it's a much taller ridge right there. These are important, okay? So let's go up to our instructions. When you look at it, your broad band right here is called your pre-torque band, okay? This one here, which I cannot read because of how poor the resolution of it is on this guy, 
is your final tensioned location. That's this tall guy right there. These short ones here indicate what shim pack to use in order for this wrench to fall into your pre-torque band before you begin your tightening. So that's a black shim in there. That's what you always have to start in. You have to start in with the black shim. And what you do is you're gonna put your wrench in a specific location on the barrel nut and you're gonna tell, you're gonna look at this guy and figure out which one of these small little protrusions lines up with the very top of the Picatinny, okay? This picture right here shows the, the tall final tensioned point right here in the top. This is your goal once you tighten it up. That big projection is going to be in the center of the Picatinny on your upper receiver, okay? But now we're going to see whether or not that black shim is the correct one to use. It very well may be. You roll the dice, sometimes it comes out that way. So let's see. Okay, what you do is you take your center lug that's going to fit into the lug on the barrel nut, okay? This is your center one, and it's directly on top of your final torque band right there. You put that in at 11 o'clock, okay? That's how you do it. You put that guy in at 11 o'clock. It always, before you start tightening things up, it always goes in at the 11 o'clock position, all right? So if you bring this guy up there, you'll notice, okay, your pretension band is off to the side, and pretty much this band right here, okay, if you do this by hand, okay, pretty much in the center, this little guy right here, okay? And that guy, says that you need two blue shims. So what you're going to do, you're going to remove this and you're going to replace the black with two blue shims. All right? If it read up here, okay, that's the green and purple shim. That's what that guy is. The red and purple shim, the blue and black shim, this is the green and black. So take this off. Okay, and you look for your shim. In this case, it's on the barrel. Sometimes it sticks to your barrel nut. You set that guy over here, and you look for the blue shims, and they have these little blue marks on it right there. There you go, two blue shims. You remove the black. two blue shims behind it, put a little bit of anti-seize on the face of this, a little grease. Okay, and again, you're going to put your lug that's directly on top. into the 11 o'clock position. If I can get everything lined up, there we go. Okay, do this by hand, not with a wrench, okay? If you're gonna put a wrench on it, you're gonna be putting force into this guy and you don't wanna do that. I did it by hand, it's a by hand, it's a little hard here on your hand to tighten up this little nub. But look and see what we got right here. Watch that pre-torque band. It's right in the center, okay? You wanna start with your pre-torque band right here in the center. This very edge of the pre-torque band, Neil, you remember that foot pound? Was that 60? You forget, don't you? Okay, if I remember correctly, this far edge is 60, this far edge is 35, all right? It's, you're in the range of where you need to be with this guy. This guy right here, it's right there. Now, it's time to tighten this guy up. And here's a torque wrench, okay? 
But remember, we're not using torque. We're not relating the coefficient of friction and the length of this wrench and how much force you put on here in order to tighten this up. We're using how much you angrily turn the barrel nut. So you don't need that guy. Here's what you need. You need a one inch pipe nipple, okay? You can pick this up at a yard sale for probably a nickel. You go to your Home Depot or Lowe's, and pick it up for three or four dollars, or you can order it from McMaster Car. Now a lot of people have said, hey Bill, why don't you take this wrench, why don't you put a, you know, a half inch, uh, um, you know, hole in this guy so I can put a torque wrench on it. You don't need it. The calculations of where these ridges go are what is going to allow you to tighten this guy up properly. And with a hundred dollar rail, why is there a need to purchase, at the very least, okay, an offshore torque wrench for 30, 35 bucks? Here's what you do. You take your pipe nipple and you put it right there, all right? Your pre-torque band is right there. You see how easy that was, two blue shims? And I just want to be perfectly frank with you, this barrel nut and everything did not go on beforehand, okay? This wasn't pre-done. This is how it is. It works out pretty much the first time. Sometimes it doesn't work like that, and you may have to look at your shim pack and remove a thousandths or two by relating different colors to each other, okay? But generally, it's one shot. So here's your, your pipe, and watch how I tighten it. I'm gonna tighten it until this big ridge is in the center of the Picatinny, okay? Boom. It's tightened and torqued and indexed. Just like that, easy as pie, all right? Now, what you wanna do is you wanna do your very final alignment of this, okay? You visually looked at this guy and saw it go into the center of the Picatinny. The human eye is very, very sensitive to symmetry. As you put that in the center, when you say your eye says that it's right there, it's pretty much you're gonna be very close. What I like to do is, I like to now look at this, and I like to relate the edges of the groove where your gas tube is gonna go with your gas tube hole, okay? If you look at it, you can tell whether or not the edges of those hole are off or not. So I'm gonna take my glasses off and look at this guy. And if you ask me, I think this thing's gotta get a little bit of a tweak going clockwise. So I just look at it right here. Now that you got any C's, all it needed was a little tweak, and that is exactly in the center. And you can see that that's in the center too. We're just talking about a fine adjustment here. Okay, your barrel nut is now tightened up and indexed. There's no need for any Loctite or anything like that. Instead of a stock barrel nut where it's too loose or too tight, this is perfectly tightened. So now we're gonna go and put our rail on. What I like to do is, it's a tight fit on here and I like to put just a little bit of oil onto this barrel nut, okay, just to make it easier, all right? It's a tightly precise fit on here. You just have to have a careful hand when you do it. You don't wanna force anything, all right? Now I'm gonna do this and I'm forgetting my gas tube and gas block, which you don't want to do. Here's one, get Geisley Super Gas Block with the gas tube already installed. And we did take the liberty to drill and put the bomb proof pin in this guy if you wanted to, all right? There you go, okay. I like to move this guy and make sure that it's in the center. But it's already been pre-drilled pre and has your little countersunk holes in it. I don't recommend putting Loctite on these screws. It's not needed. You tighten it up. Again, this was pre-done. In another video, I'll show you how to install a gas block properly. This is done for ease in this video. If you wanted to, you can take this roll pin right here. It's a spiral stainless steel roll pin. And once you match drill that hole, this roll pin 
is driven into the gas block and into your match drill hole, into your barrel, and this is a bomb-proof insulation for this. It wouldn't matter whether these screws came out or not. This would stay in place. Okay, so here's your gas system. And you just slip this guy on, okay? And as you see, it's a nice fit as you get to the end. All right? Now what I like to do is just take my fingers and look at this guy. Again, your eye is very good with symmetry. Move it into the center, and here's your holes right here for your screws. You can take your screws, and you see that, look how secure this guy is on here. It's not flopping around. It's already aligned due to the precision machine fit of the rail and to the OD of your barrel nut. Goes your screws. I don't recommend putting Loctite onto these screws. It's not necessary. They won't come out. If you feel like you have to put Loctite on them, I would probably only go with the purple Loctite, not the stronger blue, and definitely not the very strong red. If you have problems getting your screws in, just look at the holes in your rail that go up to your, your barrel nut, okay? And you might have to tweak your rail slightly to the side in order to get these screws to line up. So you see how easy these guys are going in. If they don't go in that easy and it seems like something's not lined up, just look at the, look at the holes and just tweak your rail to one side or the other. Remember, you got such a nice fit on there that that rail is staying in place. There you go. Here's your rail. It's installed, properly tightened up. It's a beautiful rail with a beautiful system of installation and it's fairly easy. The instructions are very detailed. They're designed for the normal guy who's not a gunsmith, not a machinist, to be able to take this rail and install it with confidence. Thanks for watching today. If you have any questions, please go to the ALG website where all the rails are explained, all the different lengths. The instructions are up there on the website so you can download them and you can look at it before you purchase. And if you have any further questions, please feel free to call here into ALG in North Wales, Pennsylvania, and we'd be glad to take care of you. Thanks for watching.